Hey internet, my name is Mark and today I want to just riff a little bit. This is, I think the second video I can think of where I've just kind of gone at it. Uh, but anyway, if you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I make videos, I haven't been very consistent for several months now. And this whole thing about toxic productivity kind of weighs in on that. I'm currently a software engineer. I currently change jobs. I'm currently in the process of moving across the country. And of all those things going on in my life, I don't think I can put my finger at them for the inconsistent videos or the feelings of um, non-productiveness I've had, right? For quite a while, I had this view, and I still have that view to some degree, of this distinction between work, hobby, and play. Work is, using my own life as an example, tickets on the Atlassian or Jira board for, for work. Pull in this, make a route for this page, push it. It's, it's something defined by having an external deadline for the most part. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have play. No deadlines, no pressure of any sort. It's purely because it brings you joy. That could be watching TV, playing video games, whatever it might be. And then in the middle, there's hobby. So for example, making YouTube videos. There's sort of an external deadline, but it's not an external deadline, it's internal. I say sort of because it's defined by similar requirements. You're expected to get something out at a certain time of a certain quality on a consistent schedule. And your pressure is completely internal. There's no sponsorships forcing me to make a video. No one is paying me to work. It is purely for my own pleasure. However, it, I'm, I'm also holding myself to a particular standard. Now, recently, uh, I've been kind of facing this toxic productivity head on. And it's been a thing for a while, I think, but I've kind of accepted it for reasons I probably won't go into very much beyond the fact that it's in a way a way for me to escape. Um, no escapes are, are good in excess. I think in moderation, you know, it is what it is. Everything needs to be moderated. <laughs> Something shouldn't be done at all, of course. Productivity itself needs to be moderated, right? You know, you don't want to become a full on workaholic. It's not necessarily good for you. For me, you know, I turned to these things because I wanted to complete certain objectives and yada, yada, yada. I was just thinking about, whoops, just thinking about art and my, my lack of progress with art. And it's been a challenge for, for so many years at this point. And I think it's because a long time ago, I grouped art into the hobby category of, I need to improve at it, I need to be a certain standard. I make something and I look at it and I think, gee, that's horrible. <laughs> but art should be fun, it should be creative. And there are people who say, balance it out, you know, draw for fun and then also do to a serious level sometimes. And you, you have to have fun with things, right? For these videos, I balance it out by making something like the parkour video, which I got a little perfectionist and I'm not usually like that, versus the reading ramble where I sit down, I record, and I just have fun with editing it. This riff is more on the reading ramble side where I'm just sitting here talking, this is my only preparation, poor lighting, poor mic, poor camera, relatively speaking. Something that was evident to me, I guess, uh, in terms of these, these productivity goals, is that I tend to be quite goal oriented and without a specific goal, without working towards a goal, I get very lost. Something, my, my practical example that I've been using for this is parkour. I got into parkour just under a year ago. I'm actually moving and I started in New York. Ugh, I'm, I'm quite sad about it. Uh, my first day was July 13th, at least that's when I signed up for the membership. Or no, that was my first day, July 13th, Tuesday night. If you're curious about my whole opinions of parkour and what I took away, you can watch that video here. But anyway, the notion was that I became very goal-oriented around it. It hasn't had a chance to become toxic yet, which is what I'm going to want to avoid with my move. Uh, back in January, I started setting these goals. Every month I would accomplish X. It would be backflip, dive rolls, dive rolls from a certain surface, things like that. And these goals helped me target my improvement with parkour. But at some point, I realized I wasn't having fun with it. I, I enjoy parkour. I think it's very valuable and I do have fun with it, but there's a certain, I'm not sure. When there's when there's a class, it's easy to to work on specific things, right? That's that's the section of your your sessions when you practice something really specifically, and that's when you drill something. But there's also open sessions where you should also you know work on things but have fun with them. And I found myself pretty bad at having fun with parkour uh, in, in a lot of in a lot of ways, but not always. I did have fun with it. Don't get me wrong. But there were certain things that have been telling me that, hey, I might be heading in the wrong direction, such as if I train independently, it's always because of a goal. Another example of this is back in middle school. I was playing video games, as one does, and a few friends and I started a YouTube channel where we made gaming videos. And after a little while, I was the only one who kept doing it. And somewhere along the line, seeing as I still do it today, 
video games became tied with, I have to record so I can make a video out of it. And so playing a game would literally feel unproductive. And I'm slowly still working my way into it. Playing games with friends is really easy because you can get lost in that. Playing games alone, I'm just working on sitting there, not thinking about time passing, but just trying to escape and get into it. Anyway, I digress. The point is that I am constantly taking things, having fun with them, and then they turn into a hobby. And then I take that hobby to a very serious level, which is okay. You know, you, you can do that. You, in, a, in a way, you should do that. You know, you, you should have fun with what you choose to do. If you're an artist, you should try and increase or improve your skills consistently, but not constantly. And there's a distinction there. Consistently could be doing it every day. It could also be doing it every other day. Consistency could also be doing it once a week. Constantly is every day, all the time, every single week, with no specific schedule, but it's just, it's just a timeline, right? A constant is point A to point B. Consistency is doing it once at point A, then at point B, then at point C. And I hope that distinction is kind of clear, that nuance is kind of clear, because I think consistency is very important. And it's in between being consistent that you should have fun. A bit ago, when I was thinking about this, I was talking to someone about this, I realized that I have this habit of taking things and then setting a goal and, you know, that's it. Back in, I think, 2018 or 2019, I said, okay, every single goal, I'm going to do something. Make a portfolio website. Done. Improve my typing speed to this regard. Done. Learn music theory. Play this song. COVID interrupted that. And it's a good thing, but it, again, it has its drawbacks because it wraps me into this toxic productivity mindset. My first job, which didn't last very long because I moved, there was just an issue with not being able to do things. And that's a whole other discussion for another day. But this current job has solved a lot of those things. And I'm really enjoying that so far. I'm only like a week in, but uh, the outlook is optimistic or whatever an eight ball says. And so the, the main solution here that I want to encourage others to try and to reflect on is take a look at what you're doing. Um, the things you're doing, and if you feel like you're discontent, I'm gonna stray from the word satisfied or unsatisfied, so specifically content and discontent. If you're discontent with things, ask yourself, what bar are you setting? And is there anything that you're using to balance out whatever other things you're doing? I don't know, <laughs> it didn't make sense. A situation that I thought of in my head was kind of like someone who is maybe objectively poor at art, you know, myself now, let's say, uh, who does a lot of art, shares it and says, hey, here's what I drew, is going to have a leg up over the artist, real me, who is also have, has bad art, but doesn't share it, but doesn't actually do it. One is a good artist, one is not an artist at all. And now the good artist in this situation, if it wasn't clear, that's the person who, the version of me, who does my current art that's bad and uh, promotes it and shares it. Because over time, when you have fun with something, you'll keep doing it. And if you keep doing it, you do something consistently, and if you do something consistency, progress is a, a side effect, a consequence. Parkour at the start, I just showed up and I have improved quite a bit. It's just consistency and progress, again, was a side effect. The, the, the call to action here is that I implore you to, if you have a relationship with productivity like I do, which is inherently toxic productivity, you're not doing things that you feel bad. The only reason I think that I feel okay right now is because in three weeks, I'm gonna be moving to Seattle. And so from now until then, I don't have any sort of standard for myself because I don't want to set a schedule. I don't want to grow roots or anything because they're all gonna be uprooted in three weeks. So I'm using this positive headspace to try and create things that I can balance out the sense of toxic productivity. Oh no, I'm not sticking to a schedule. I'm not waking up on time. That doesn't matter right now because it's not supposed to, in my head at least, but it's gonna start mattering soon. Something I've done is I've defined three things that will never breach into serious hobby. They are things in which I want to improve at, but will not set any goals for. The way I decided these things is I looked back and I said, what's something I could have started four years ago? The time span is pretty irrelevant. I apologize for all the mess, by the way. The time span is irrelevant. Could be one year, could be three months, whatever. But what is, let's just say one thing where you said, I, if I had started this one year ago, oh man, imagine where I'd be now. Imagine if in the eighth grade, I took art quite seriously nine years ago. Imagine where I would be now. If I consistently started Drawbox back in, you know, if I consistently did Drawbox when I started it back in 2019, if I did that and I finished the lessons, whew, I would be so far now. The thing is I didn't do those things and doing something in any capacity will be better than not doing it at all. 
there are exceptions to that rule, but specifically for these, these hobbies, right? For art, if you just have fun with it and you draw, you might create bad habits, sure, but you will also gain improvement. So bad habits and improvement. Even if you consciously improve, you might be doing things wrong and you don't know. That's how I've chosen my things. You can use whatever criteria you want, but what's something that you wish you were good at and you've wished you were good at for a long time? I've wished I was good at art for as long as I can remember. So there's art and I also have guitar and I also have video games. These are three things that starting now and going to Seattle are things that I will set aside time for, but nothing else. If I don't do them, that's okay. You know, I've gotten this far without doing them, whatever. I've gotten this far without doing them, whatever. I think there, there's something to say for enjoying the process of failure and whether or not that lines up with what you like doing. For example, parkour, I constantly failed at it and that was okay because I really reveled in that. I enjoyed failing there. My current job, you know, the roadblocks aren't feelings of frustration. It's like, okay, I'm just I'm brand new to this code base, yada, yada, yada. I'm not a backend developer. I mean, literally I am now, but by trade, I haven't really got much experience with this stuff. So take it and run with it. And those are feelings of enjoyment. But you know, when I, when I literally broke my shoulder and couldn't do parkour for a while, all of a sudden it created this vacuum and I realized how important uh, it was to me to do that that sport. I went into Japanese with a completely productive mindset. And between productive sessions, you know, you, you gotta find a, a constant way of enjoying it, just watching TV in Japanese, whatever. The point here is that you don't fight toxic productivity, you balance it out. Again, I think it's, don't quote me on this, don't believe me, don't adopt this view as your own, but I don't think toxic productivity is a bad thing, which is a bad thing. <laughs> it is a bad thing, but I don't I think it is. To me, it's better than other stuff. So in a sense, I have this relationship that I with it, with productivity that I don't want to let go of yet, but I understand it is harmful. And so to balance it out, I'm finding things in which usually I would say, learn this number of chords, play this song, yada, yada, yada on the guitar. But as I kind of learned a few weeks ago, I remembered like four chords. I could still do it and it paid off in a weird way. In other words, like I had it, I knew a few chords, but it, it paid off in, in a good memory. That's a weird thing. Like I, I would never have thought, you know, to the level I had gotten to Katara, but it goes to show me that level's not important there. My note on toxic productivity is don't fight it, but balance it out. Creating this relationship with productivity is, is easy to fall into because at least for me, I went, I you know, I went all in on making videos, Minecraft plugins, creating websites, learning a language, all this stuff I just went all in and I enjoy this process of learning and challenging myself. I enjoy the process of making a goal, working towards that goal. And in parkour, I enjoy failing to reach that goal. Not always the case though. And that's a part of loving the process. So find things that you don't put a lot of stake into and let those be fun. <laughs> So people can say, what do you do for fun? I can finally have an answer. Cause it's always been, oh, I mean, I'm learning Japanese, but I don't know if that's for fun. It is, but my definition of fun is not for fun. Parkour is for fun. It's not professional, but there are also parts of parkour where I try to actively engage. That's my spiel. You don't fight this, this thing that is toxic productivity, but you do balance it out. And in balancing it out, um, we can create or hopefully, right, I can create environments holding a guitar or pencil in a sketchbook where there are no standards. This isn't gonna be a binary thing either. It's not gonna like I'm sit down like, ooh, I enjoy art now. I need to work to fight that mindset. But I'm not doing it in general. I'm saying make some space for these three things, <laughs> guitar, art, and video games. And I'm, I'm balancing it out. And hopefully that takes away time from those things I'm productive at you know, whether it be making a website or work itself or making videos, puts the fun into something. And so that when I return to be, to be more productive, to be actually productive, I'm using this, this word productive in a very specific sense. You can still be productive while having fun, but be productive at work, then it balances out the having fun. I don't know how much of this makes sense, but I wanted to riff about it. Uh, and, and I feel like this was a very continuous stream of thought for 18 minutes. So I'm kind of impressed with myself, not gonna lie. But yeah, that's gonna be one of my goals coming up is keeping productive, make, getting myself back on the schedule with these videos, but ensuring that I do things for fun. And I've outlined those three things. Uh, so it'll be a learning process, but 
yeah, thanks for watching and or listening. Uh, let me know what your things are, or just one thing, or nothing at all. Who knows? I have a reading ramble coming out soon, I guess. It's going to be the end of June. And I talk a bit more about this, because in reading, uh, that's been one of these realizations. You know, make, it, make a less goal-oriented thing and make a more what do you hope to gain out of this kind of goal. Doing a dive roll from a high surface is an amazing achievement, but also I gained a lot out of it, even if I didn't end up doing that. So have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you in the next video.